Hi there, this is Rick again. This is uh, an extension of the Hell's Kitchen mission that I'm building. I've now completed the um, stockade or detention center. Um, and I'm going to show you how this works in game. Basically, it allows players to vote for other players who perhaps are not team players and maybe just disregard orders. So it's kind of a feature, as I mentioned in one of my previous um, videos, it's kind of, it could be misused, but I think it's going to be quite funny. Um, so I've set it so that I can actually vote myself into, I can vote myself into the stockade um, with one single vote. Obviously, you wouldn't normally do that. This is set up a UAV center in the center over here, so... Um, because this mission is pretty long and uh, in quite an involved process and there are basically six uh, separate missions um, finding and in large areas so finding the AI is going to be or enemy is going to be quite tricky anyway so here's a detention center uh, let's get my guys out the way Right, so I set up a little notice board where you can, uh, when you get within four, four meters of it, gives you the option to vote for a player and put the player in a stockade. Typically it would involve three votes, normally. Okay, so I'm going to vote. You see that it looks up what who's currently playing in a multiplayer game, uh, or single player, it will see that I'm... My name's Mike, so it says vote for Mike. So I'm going to vote myself into the stockade. So, and it hints at the top right, it says um, Mike has received one vote from Mike. So obviously um, that dumps me in and it removes my weapons. And then um, at the top it tells you that I'm in the stockade for one minute, which obviously is a little short. Typically it probably would be five minutes or longer depending on how severe you want to punish people and then after the specified time elapses the doors will open and I obviously can't open these doors these doors are, are locked um, so there's nothing I can do I, other than just sort of walk around and have a look at the other detainees So hopefully, shortly, the doors will open. Here is the weather forecast for the night of May for military personnel operating in the Helmand province. When I exit, it locks the doors. And another feature that I've added is the public address system now occasionally will broadcast the weather forecast for the area. So let's get back into the mission and then I'll show you how I created the, the effects on the voting system. Alright, so this is the stockade. I'm not really concerned about this area because this is a separate, uh, it's really just a completely independent area and I'm not really concerned about that I'm only interested in this section here which is where the players will be placed if I look at this you can see there's a marker called stockade it's essentially in the center of this area here there's a gate and on the gate um, I set the set variable biz disabled door um, it's a public variable so every so this will be synchronized across the network and that means lock the door one and the gate name is gate one you notice that this is repeated twice and that the reason for that is that this gate has two doors strangely enough so the door itself is locked both doors are locked by default there's a trigger as you approach the door from the outside and that trigger basically puts the gate gate one it plays the animation uh, door to rotate and door one rotate one being open the door 
So when I walk into this trigger, the doors will open. And then it basically also sends a hint to the screen saying, if you enter the stockade, warning, if you enter the stockade, um, you won't be able to get out again. And then when, uh, when this trigger deactivates, it basically then um, closes the doors behind you and clears the hint. So essentially, and this is a repeatable Blue Force present trigger. So basically, if you walk in here, the doors will open. A hint will come to the screen and tell you to be careful because if you go in here, you're not going to be able to get out unless another teammate uh, walks into this trigger and opens the gate for you to let you out. So that's a sort of a bypass. The other trigger here covers this area. Um, basically says when Blue Force is not present, it's repeatable, then basically lock the doors, both, both doors, and close both doors. So once the player comes out of the stockade, it locks the doors again and closes the doors. Okay, so now the voting system. I placed a little texture onto the little board. So using set object texture global, which means that it will be the texture will be visible on all clients. And then quite a complicated add action. So <clears throat> very difficult to see what that ad, ad action does without going to uh, the actual text, a text editor, just so you can actually see the, the commands more clearly. So that notice board is called notice board one, and it contains a primary ad action, which is sort of a reddish color. And it says vote a player into the stockade or vote more than one player into the stockade. And then basically it runs multiple if statements depending and it checks to see if each player and the players are named P1 to P, P8. It's, it checks to see if these uh, playable units are actually controlled by a player and if they are then it adds an action to the notice board. Um, it passes the the text to um, uh, to the add action. Um, so in this instance, it needs to format the text because I need to pass a variable to the text so the text changes. So in this case, it'll be vote for reference to variable name p1. Now the unit um, the unit in the editor is the variable is p1 name is the current name of the player that is currently using that object in other words the player in this case it will return mike as opposed to p1 so mike will be returned into this variable here to so vote for mike and when this add action takes place it will run the script 1.sqf in the scripts folder with a priority of nine, meaning that these are all descending priorities so that they uh, will be in sequence. This primary add action has a priority of 10, meaning that it will always be at the top of the list. Um, the add action on the notice board will only be visible when I'm less than four meters from it. Okay, so it has a script, it runs a script for each individual player that's being voted for. So if I look at number one.sqf, um, it sets a cooler time. In other words, the amount of time the guy's going to be locked up in the stockade. Um, I just, for testing purposes, use 60 seconds. The voter is the person voting against me in this case. Bad player will be me. So um, Obviously, the voter normally wouldn't be myself because I generally don't like being in a stockhead. Um, it then sees, it then checks to see whether the voter has already voted. So create, there's a variable, or sorry, there's an array called voted for one. 
So it will store all of the player names that have voted for one in there. It first checks to see if the current voter is already in the array. If so, it then exits. Otherwise, it will do this. So if you haven't voted for this player before, then you can vote. And so basically what it does is it adds your name as the voter into, into the variable voted for and the public variables, it's a public variable, so it synchronizes that across all the clients. Then um, it adds one to P1 votes, so it checks to see how many votes and adds one to it. It also synchronizes that across the network. And then it posts a hint using remote exec to all of the clients on the network. And it basically says um, name bad player, meaning myself. It puts that into the placeholder into this variable and it says that it'll be Mike has a number of votes, X number of votes, one vote cast by the name of the voter. So post that to the screen, sleeps for three seconds, and then it checks to see how many votes he's actually the bad players received. In this case, if the bad players received one or, or more than one, um, Obviously, that will be changed. Normally, I have it as three. Then send a message to the screen, which says bad player, name bad player. In other words, Mike. Send to the stockade for, and it takes the cooler time, which in this case is 60 seconds and divides by 60. In other words, one minute. Uh, then a bad player is teleported into the stockade position, which is the marker I showed you earlier removes all the weapons from the player. It then uh, sets the timer for the current time plus the cooler time and then it waits for that period. Waits for the stock timer to be less, uh, sorry, while wa waits until it will, until it is less than equal to the current time. Um, then uh, it sends a message saying he's been released it also remote execs it across the network. Um, it then opens gate one, opens uh, opens gate one, door one, door two, opens it. Then it resets the votes to zero. It synchronizes that across the network. Voted for one, it sets to zero, synchronizes that across the network, and then exits the script. Um, in the instance that the voter is in the voted for um, array, then it will pass. It'll it will basically post a message to the individual players, not remoting executing this. This is just sending it to the player that placed the vote. In other words, the voter, and it will say you've already uh, voted for this player, so you can't vote more than once. And so that's what happens for each of these um, individual scripts for each of the individual players that can be voted for. So that's the way the um, that's the way this little detention center works. Um, it actually works pretty well and um, you could actually potentially put AI in here as well. They won't pass through the walls. As long as you embed the walls uh, uh, to terrain at, at terrain height, make sure that they are, and the gate is locked. An AI will not pass through the lock gate, so so you could use it potentially to keep AI in here. Um, anyway, I hope that was of use to you, and uh, please subscribe if you like this content. Thanks very much. Cheers.